Thank you so much, Pyra and Caps, and welcome to the post game lobby. Indeed, still joined here by Memento and the Fisher to look back on the games today. Of course, starting with the series that just ended. Fnatic, they pulled it out in the end. They take the win over Vital. What are you giggling about? No, I just like this series was. <laughs> Watching it was actually super fun because mm -hmm. there were so many different picks. We were screaming about GBM Zareth. Obviously, so he actually yeah. promised me a triple Luton's Echo build that said mm -hmm. it didn't happen, didn't which happen. is why they lost, obviously. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, well, all in all, I thought it was quite interesting to hear Caps also saying about uh, Broxa. Oh, yeah, you know, the, the rookie that we're going to yeah, mold, he's and he's a rookie himself. He's a rookie himself. Like, you're 17 years <laughs> yeah, old. Yeah, yeah. But it's still, I think it's, it's cool. It's a cool sentiment. He's obviously very happy that they managed to pull out the win. And I want to talk a bit later about Vitality as well, because I don't think they should be too unhappy with this result either after a, a double swap. But let's focus on this third game, um, especially the fact that Vitality actually was in a pretty good position to win it. It looked awesome if you're Vitality. Like, bot lane took tower, mm -hmm. GBM got early kills on the Seraph, who would scale into like a monster. We were like, 3k goal lead, I believe yeah. it was. Like, this game, you know, it looks over. Like, Kennen is not going to do anything in late game team fights. Fnatic, they have to pull some miracle. Yeah. And mid game team fight happened, sadly, yeah. for Vitality. Yeah. But it's the same problem that Vitality have been having this series. They just don't know how to actually pressure the opponent when they get a lead. They don't get any objectives. They don't get the towers that they need. They just like keep laning and they just don't actually do anything. They don't deny even Broxa his camps. Yeah, as we saw sure. there, the uh, gold lead non-existent. And then we see a spike all of a sudden because it's a team fight that turns everything around and says, Fnatic, the game is yours. Yeah, and this is such a shame because, first of all, GBM, if he actually saves his flash instead of flashing where swords can follow him, he can then either flash over the wall and be safe, uh, or maybe even have an, a better positioning with the Shen ult uh, when he joins. But also, if you look at your minimap super quick, still back, we're still sitting and farming in the bottom lane. Yeah. So it's a good engage from, from Fnatic, but it's one of those situations where you're like, how do you have zero vision on that side as Vitality so you don't see the engage happening and you just get so surprised because this actually turned the entire game around. Yeah, the game was basically over after this. And fun but Fnatic could have actually... But to be honest, it... Mm, still back, we were actually mm. talking about if he could maybe have done a little bit more here, but... I mean, yeah, he could actually flash in there or go for a hero play, like... Because at this point, if they get the Nash, they're probably going to snowball the game and actually win it. So, I don't see any... I mean, you got to actually have some courage and actually do something. Yeah, I, I think so too as well. Um, like, they were clearly trying to stop the Baron, but no one was actually like fully committing, other than Kaba Shout, mm -hmm. who, who, who taunted in. Steelback was full HP. Yeah. Caps was outside with uh, very low HP on, on the Malzahar. I think maybe you could have been a bit, bit more aggressive, but you shouldn't have been there in the first place because you got caught in the mid lane, uh, which obviously was what cost him. And we heard Caps just say this, and we talked about it as well, like, Against Zareth, you're never going to get a turret. You're never going to siege your turret against him. So if you don't get a huge advantage early, or you start getting like Barons or Elder Drakes, I don't know how you're going to like start getting a big goal advantage through turrets. You can also rely on your opponents doing interesting build paths and Memento. You were quite frustrated about Joko uh, and his Graves and his build yeah. specifically, knowing that Lethality is pretty strong. What ha would you like to have seen? I mean, I kind of like the QSS, it makes sense, it's against mm -hmm. Malzahar, you don't want to get caught, but the Steric Edge did not make any sense. I mean, I saw that in OSK they, uh, they bought Steric Edge, but that was because they faced Rengar, and has a lot of burst, and you can't like actually survive the burst. But if you don't have any like burst champion on the other team, you don't need that Steric Edge. Go for the more damage, hope that you get that damage off with GBM, get that ulti off, mm -hmm. maybe you kill someone, maybe you get a catch, maybe you can snowball that lead. Yeah, you personally go for both Duskblade and uh, Edge of the I would Knight. go for Ghostblade, Edge of the Night, and Duskblade. I just go ham. Uh, and actually, I, executioner <laughs> calling as well would be great because it reduce the healing of them. They're definitely gonna die. Yeah. They okay. will die. I mean, there was so much damage on Vitality side. There were great wave clear, no siege potential on Fnatic side. So when you up three uh, K gold at like what 18 minutes it was, mm -hmm. you're like in prime position to just stop the enemy from, from ever really getting anything unless you get surprised in fights and then you start messing up around Baron. And that's just where it went wrong for Vitality and where Fnatic honestly outplayed them which is full credit to Fnatic there, but you look at that Seraph and you're just like, it could have done so much more. You just, you, you want to see GBM win on Seraph. The early, I, I want to see the Magi's in the end, I mean, of course it was relatively early. But yeah, do not buy super early Magi's, because you already had Dark Seal, you can wait for that to stack up before you actually buy your Soul Stealer. He bought it and died instantly, yeah. and had like almost no stacks on it, so it was useless for like 15, 16 minutes, and then he finally got a few stacks in the end. Yeah, uh, well, we need to crown a player of the series. It's always difficult when it goes three games because one of the games, of course, uh, not everyone will have shown up. But Soaz, you guys said, really had a really big hand in winning that third game. Yeah, because obviously the third game was all about Serath. 
and so was he caught him like first in mid lane. They got Nash because of that, and then the second time he caught him off uh, over the wall, I think, mm -hmm. in the mid lane, and they get the mid lane in it from that. And like so was just carried that game honestly. The hard counter to Sereth is like hard engage, yeah. and especially point on click stuff because mm -hmm. then it's super easy to flash click the Sereth. He's stuck right there. He's not getting out. So was did his job perfectly in this game here. Uh, had a fine game one as well. So. I think giving him a uh, play of the series was uh, well deserved. Uh, I bet if you ask him, he'd be like, ha ha, I played Maokai, big deal. Hey, I mean. Hey, someone's he, got to do it. He did a great job. Yeah, so. he did, definitely. Did. Let's take a look at some of the other players. Of course, uh, Vitality bringing in the chains, Nuke Duck in the bottom lane, GBM then uh, in the mid lane. How do we think they did? Nuke Duck actually had a pretty good performance in game three and begged to differ also in games one and two. Uh, hmm, not really game one. Game one was uh, definitely shaky. If I think Nukedark, I feel like we've seen this before from like mid laners who become supports. This is a play, they play super aggro because yeah. they're just like, you know what, I'm just gonna look for traits. He was hiding in brushes and like finding Jesse's and then Re Reckless as well. So game three, I actually think his uh, Zyra performance was really good. Uh, but it's, mm -hmm. it's like very inconsistent because he's still learning the role, obviously. I mean, to be fair, playing that aggressive is what got them that lead actually yeah, in the exactly. first place. So I really liked it. But, I mean, playing aggressive lane isn't everything. You also have to, like, coordinate with your jungler and get the vision and everything. What kind of non solo queue so. thing is that to say? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> laning is everything. Yeah, well, not all the time. He probably still has a lot to learn, uh, especially outside of lane. But I think for a guy who just rolls dropped into support and probably hasn't played it since Season 2, basically, uh, I don't think Vitality can be unhappy mm. with that performance. Uh, GPM is one we have to look more at. Um, I think... But lane is not everything. Lane that is definitely, definitely not everything. Uh, that's true. I mean, I, Vitality needs GBM to be really good if they want to start winning games, especially against better teams. But uh, GBM needs to show, like, over multiple games if he can actually perform at a high enough level before we can say that he's a good mid laner just yet. Yeah, uh, I mean, the fact that he picks Zera, do you think maybe naturally there are some champion pool issues here? I mean, I mean, to be honest, he was in? playing jungle before. Like, yeah. he's been playing jungle for, like, the whole off season. And now he just plays mid lane. And to be honest, I kind of want to see more Seraph. Seraph is really? a nice champion. It can stall out games very, yeah. very long. It can. I mean, we also got to see a weird mid lane matchup of Malzahar mid <laughs> against Seraph, like kind of old school. And it's a good pick into Malzahar. So it made sense for him to go for. He's been spamming it in solo queue, yeah. you said as well. Um, so, and it is, it's an old comfort for him. Like he used to be known as like the Seraph god, basically. So. <laughs> I'm not surprised he picked it. I, I think the guy also can show all the champions. We just have to give him more time. Yeah, that's yeah. plain as well. I thought it was interesting that beforehand we asked like, well, if you were the coach of Caps, would you keep uh, putting him on these aggressive champions? He'd go, Miles <laughs> Don't do anything for 30 minutes. <laughs> but still died, actually. But then, <laughs> yeah. With the team, I mean, this must have been a good exercise because then with, mid, little, with the team, they did manage to, uh, to win. And the cannon, you guys weren't happy about it, but it, it, mm. it worked. It didn't really make much sense. No. Honestly, I would rather no. see a Caitlyn or an Ash. Actually, with Ash, you can actually pull the trigger against Seraph. I agree. I, I, I don't think Kennen had any impact uh, in the game specifically. We know Reckless likes to play the split push Kennen style, and I can definitely see it against uncoordinated teams. Mm -hmm. It can be super annoying to deal with, but there were other AD carry choices uh, available that probably would have been better in this case here. But because the team fighting with the Maokai into Zerath was just so effective, uh, it actually didn't really matter. All right. Last words about this series. Where do you see Vitality going? Where do you see Fnatic going if this is the lineups that they keep, Memento? Mm, that's actually quite hard to say. Because Vitality obviously need more time. We didn't really see that much from them today. But I mean, there are some good points, obviously, like some positive things, how they actually got advantage. They just need to learn how to actually use them properly. But Fnatic overall, they looked really good in macro-wise, at least the first game. So I think they might actually Maybe third place. Nah, just kidding. We're gonna be third place, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but we'll see. We'll see. I think Fnatic is in a sweet spot in Group A, where they're not really gonna catch Misfits and G2 yet, but they're they also have at least some breathing room because the two teams underneath need to start winning games. Obviously, like I mean, we're trying. You're trying, but Giants next week play H2K, so they're probably not gonna pick up a win there either, and that gives Fnatic even more time to sit in that. Uh, middle spot, and if you're a fanatic right now, there's you're no one coming. There's oh. no one. There. No, should we go down there? <laughs> take a picture with them? No, there's oh, one. Okay. We found one. Found I'm just one. giving the the had the uh, the cell phone to take a picture. It's actually a big group too. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, yeah, there you go, guys. We just play by play. The the fan meets <laughs> downstairs. And the handshake. He nails it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, fanatic, they're gonna make playoffs. 
But not because Fnatic are gonna, gonna be as good as Misfits and G2, but because Giants and Rocket Ooh. are not gonna catch them. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm just saying, you're, that's, you're, you're, that's why they're gonna you're, make playoffs. Insane, no. Well, let's talk about some other teams. You mentioned the Misfits and uh, they went up versus Splice today, which we anticipated to be a really good matchup, but it was a clean 2-0. For the Misfits and this guy, he went absolutely off Oof. Memento. Uh, still impressed by what he pulled off today. Kakao Poke Champ. Yep. <laughs> he played extremely well today, actually. Yeah, he did. Two games Lee Sin, didn't care about your Kha'Zix. Or yeah. Splice's Kha'Zix, because Trashy didn't really offer anything <laughs> in the series. And man, Splice. I had my rant, I was mad. You're disappointed. Yeah. I was like, come on, you stuck together with the same team. How do you have synergy issues? It just doesn't make any sense. So, uh, I actually asked this question to Memento earlier yeah. when uh, when you guys were casting, the fact that they they actually are slowing some of the same problems that they did throughout the entirety of last year, which sure. is the not so good early game, and then they had the ability to fight back. Trash, he's not completely dominating the early game, so... But they lost the ability to fight back. Uh-huh. That's it. Like, they are playing worse macro late game than, like, other teams, especially Misfits in this series. Mm -hmm. So once we got to late game, we were trying to build up this, like, Hype little thing being like, all right, this is the comeback time for Spice. This is like 2016 Spice. This is now the kick it in gear. They out rotate Misfits. They out team fight them late game. It's gonna happen. And then they lost every single team fight and got caught a few times and lost the game instantly. It was like, okay, well, you're not even better late game now. Uh, and that's where we just see this team struggle against the top teams. Uh, Memento was also saying in the beginning that you were very impressed specifically in terms of vision and what Ignar is bringing to the Misfits team has been yeah. huge. But I think Ignar's been doing a really good job lately. Like, he's actually... It's really hard to actually carry a support, but mm -hmm. this guy, he proves everyone wrong. Because everyone sees to there and crying and solo kill. Like, support is such a useless role. They said about Ignar, not anymore, like, man. No. He's like, baby, I'm gonna show you. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna show you. Uh, yeah, Ignar did really good. And just in general, Splice, not in a good place. But Misfits, the amount of... Um, improvement they've gone through in even two weeks. Because I remember in weeks one and two, we were like, ah, Misfits, yeah, that's nah, actually not going to be that mm -hmm. good. They, they are lacking a lot of things in sense of macro. And all of a sudden, they are out rotating sp Splice, even though they made a couple of mistakes. They go for the right objectives. And at the core wow. of that, they have some really, really good individual players. We mentioned Kakao, Alfari is in there. Power of Evil crushed it again today. And, mm -hmm. the, you know, they have a lot to work off, basically. Yeah, I 100% agree. I think we had a like little checklist coming into the split where we were like, okay, players, yes, coaching, staff, yes. And then like early game, great, you know, three checks. But there were some, Miami some blanks yeah. right there. It might be check. <laughs> and then there were some blanks being like, oh, the late game, not too mm -hmm. sure, the team fighting, the vision, the Baron setups. But now I feel like all those boxes, we can kind of check them as well because the Baron setups are fantastic. They're super, super coordinated. They instantly just like take down the jungler, finish off the Baron. They make very few like big mistakes around that objective. And that is typically the problem for European teams is actually yeah. executing around Baron in the late game. What for you guys mm. is a, a box that you really want to check that you need to improve on for Giants? For Giants? I mean, overall, like early game mostly. Jungle. Because... Hey, the jungle so is great. Keep, yeah, you're actually doing really well. <laughs> No, it's mostly just early game and then actually working more as a team. And I can't really say more. How do you improve that it. fast enough? Fast enough? Working together as a team. Spam it, it, games, goddammit. Just, just scrim, scrim, spam scrim, games, scrim. Play, play scrims, play scrims, and play okay. solo queue. And then try to watch LCK, like everything. Yeah. Yes, if you really talk. want to improve, you have to, you have to work hard. Um, There's no other way around it. Yeah, of course, and play scrims with the right mindset, I think, is that something we, we have heard a couple of times from Europe in the past, that uh, maybe scrim culture, if you just start losing and you quit and you give up, that's not good. you got to try and yeah, fight yeah. back from every situation. I mean, there are some games where you get like 5, 6k behind like after 10 minutes, then they're not really worth playing. Or if you get like cheese level 1 in scrim and then you like get Did behind like 3k it? or 2k, you know, mm -hmm. or one, yeah, 1, 2k, like, that early, oh, it's, it's everything not... now. It's 1k behind, 2k behind, 3k behind. Okay, <laughs> we get yeah. behind. That's <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, after today's matches, let's take a look at the standings. First up, Group A, still the leaders, G2, 5-0, and, and Misfits now very steadily. with 4-1, and one. The Unicorns of Love and H2K uh, mm. are 1-2, and two, and then Splice is still number 3. Giants in fourth place. So, Group A and Group B. From anything that we've seen today, can we say that one group is slightly stronger than the other, or that one group's one and two are slightly stronger than the other. Wait, that was I made that difficult for no reason. Is yeah. group A stronger than group B or the other way around? See, I thought coming into this week, group B would be stronger. Now, I actually think the groups are super, super even. 
And it's like, it's kind of the same setup where the top two teams in each group are a step ahead of the other teams. And they're very close, all four, like H2K, Misfits, G2, Unicorns. Fnatic Splice both have like a few positives, or some positives, but also like a lot of question marks. So I, I wouldn't rank like Splice above Fnatic specifically. I think they're probably very even. Yeah. And then the same, like if you go further down, like I think you guys will probably beat Vitality right now, uh, but not by like a landslide. It's not going to yeah. be a 2-0 stomp or anything. So actually, I just feel like the groups are pretty even at the moment. So whoever drafted here did a fantastic job splitting up the teams. Yeah, the teams did. The teams did. So yeah. They did a great job. <laughs> Right. Do you agree? Do you agree? I do agree. Great. We do agree that the teams did a great job. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, for us, we will be back tomorrow at 4 p.m. Central European time. We are final two matchups of the week H2K versus Rocket and G2 versus OG. And if you're still hungry for more league, our friends across the ocean at the NALCS will begin their week at midnight local time Cloud9 versus Team Liquid, followed by Immortals versus Team Dignitas. We're Quick predictions, saving, guys. Uh, yeah. H2K, Rocket, and G2 OG. Yeah, oh, it seems we're pretty saving straightforward. the Cloud games here for last, yeah. I feel. Mm. As I asked the question, I thought it was a bit obsolete. I'm gonna go Rocket and Origin, mm -hmm. just for the opposites. I mean, I hope Rocket loses, so... I, for I, you, I think they probably will. Oh, oh, yeah, so technically you're probably cheering actually for both H2K and G2. Yeah, basically. All right. That's a good spot to be in. Uh, thank you're you probably so gonna be happy tomorrow as well. So. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, Memento. Thank you as well, the fish Thank you for having me. Time for us to log off for the night. Thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow, 4 p.m. as we conclude the first week of Cross Group Play. Have a good night.